Hello everyone, it's Infinity Gamer here and I have got some beautiful terrain to show you today. This Middle Eastern themed terrain comes to us courtesy of Micro Art Studios. I'm going to immediately give them a shout out, not just for building this and, and sending it my way, but for being so incredibly patient with this video, uh, with the releases of M5, uh, with uh, Torchlight still being worked on. I just had so much going on. It's a really exciting time in Infinity and unfortunately this didn't get the attention it deserves, but that's all ending now. <laughs> This is beautiful stuff that we're seeing here. As I said, Middle Eastern inspired, very sci-fi Middle Eastern, which is fantastic for a thematic table. No matter which game you're playing, I realise that 40k is a bit more grim, dark, and not as bright and vibrant as what you're seeing here. This has been made almost exclusively and especially for Corvus Belli's Infinity. You can see that with some of the cool details that come through in the terrain. Let me give you a big overview of what's here how it can be set up and why I love it so much. Some of the key features of this Al Medinat series that comes from Minecraft Studios is that there's a lot of modularity that you see here, but that is nothing in comparison to the stunning style of it. This is pre-printed. So everything you see here is as it comes out of the box with some minor assembly required, but the details in these and the design is already on the MDF when you get it which means all you have to do is glue it together, wait for the glue to dry, and then enjoy it on the table without any fuss, which is great. There's no way that I would be able to get my train looking this beautiful. And so I love the fact that I can have a stunning thematic table pretty much instantly, and it's all thanks to the work of the team at MicroArt Studios. So what have we got here? This is the Wave 1 bundle, the Almedinat set. And it comes with, they say nine, but it's actually slightly more than nine products. Uh, because I've split out one of the products here just to show you how dynamic it can be in that Wave 1 bundle. So we've got the Almedinat Gate, got two of those in this bundle. We've got the Kuba Domes, which are great. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that they, they typically get used. Uh, we've got two Hammam buildings. Uh, we've got the Minaret, the Almedinat Minaret Tower, which I've broken down into its three parts. And then we have the Madrasa building, which is the big one. Here in the middle. The real beauty of this table actually comes when you start to put a couple of these elements together and there are so many configurations that you can do even just with these products that you pretty much won't get bored of how they go. There's no one way to play them which is stunning. One of the ways I like to set this up is with the Almedinat, the Minaret Tower fully formed. You might not have been able to tell from the components but part of the reason why I like this separate is because one of the middle element is actually very play throughable. Then you've got things like this which are nice little towers that elevate you up to the same level as some of these higher ones. But as soon as you combine them together, you actually then get quite a nice centerpiece with some nice height to it. So putting that kind of at the back so you can get more of a sense of scale, it does then go into a layer that can very easily see down onto other areas. So you might want to avoid putting this in an area where things can deploy, but uh, very good fun either way. And then the Kuba domes, while they look great on the floor, and obviously very easy to put in Pretty much any of these buildings one of the ways you'll probably want to do it is actually pokemon on the top there which does shut off this top area from being a bit of a sniper tower but that could be a good thing could be a bad thing depending on what you're aiming to do with your table and that's what i think what i appreciate the most about this is that it gives the the table setup a lot of flexibility which means that you can do the table that you want it's not one way to play it or, or do it and so with the configurations you do have this uh, very large central building which has off angles which is great because when you start to put things against it it puts them at unusual angles that you maybe wouldn't have chosen to do yourself these balustrades when you're assembling them the micro Art studios instructions which are beautiful i'll show you them there and actually tell you to not glue these in so that you can very easily pull them out which makes the the table layout again incredibly flexible now if you're playing infinity and using this table then things like these parapets don't get in the way of your movement and stuff like that but while they do provide cover they actually don't provide line of sight blocking either because you can see through them which i find quite cool when i've played using that rule now there's two gates go all together the gates have uh, stairs leading up to the top which means they suit being played at this height or adjacent to one of the larger buildings and you can have the minaret tower sat slightly further back you could make an incredibly tall building like that pop those sorts of things out front just to break up line of fire 
essentially into and through the gates. Um, and then using the Hammam buildings, uh, we can do that even better or spread them out. So depending on the, the density that you like your table, this wave one, our meta in that series, could be a fantastic, you could stretch it to half a table uh, if you wanted a fairly light setup, which some people do and I advocate for. If you want more density, there is the Caliphate bundle, which is pretty much a full table, quite dense, if that's what you're looking for from this uh, Middle Eastern sci-fi terrain set. From an assembly perspective, it's incredibly easy to put together. Uh, the instructions are really clear. Uh, that didn't stop me from making a couple of mistakes, but that was uh, mostly just me. For example, this floor here, uh, you won't be able to tell, but it's around the wrong way. And the only way I managed to discover that was when I then went to put in the balustrades. I noticed that they didn't line up with what was in the picture or how it recommends. So that's how I figured it out. But because it's a you know, checkered pattern, it's really difficult to know. And one of the doors in here actually had to get a slight trim because it was butting up against this lower level. But when I spoke to the team at MicroArt about that, they said that actually what they tend to do is put those door inserts in last, get the main structure in, then do that. So that's a way around that if you find yourself in the same sort of situation. And so whether you're playing Warhammer 40k, I don't know if Shadowpoint would use this sort of terrain. I've never actually played Shadowpoint, but definitely for Infinity, this is ideal and it falls into that Hacker's Lamb uh, theme, that uh, Middle Eastern sci-fi setting. It comes with some cool details that are a bit unique to Infinity too. So there's billboards, which I'll try and get a close-up of there, that talk about Toha covering stuff up. And then we've got another one that's about Pan Oceania doing sneaky things, which sounds like Pan Oceania. Really stunning terrain. I've had a couple of games on it now, and I have not had a single problem with it. One of the things I was curious about when I saw the photos before actually receiving the set was that one of the setup pictures actually showed both of these gates together, which is thematically stunning because you've got a really imposing entranceway that is quite thick, takes up a lot of table size, but then also has cover on the inside, which is beautiful. But I was very curious as to what, how do you get down from there? Uh, Mike I have already thought of this, and there is a separate stairs and uh, bridges bundle pack that you can get that very nicely uh, sets this up, but you don't need it. It's only if you're going to be having these as purely on their own and you want people to be able to climb up and climb down, then that would definitely be a good purchase to get at the same time as this. And likewise, if you didn't want the building butted up against each other so that people can traverse from one to the other, and the bridges pack is going to be very good. I really love this set, not only because it's so convenient and efficient, you disassemble it, glue it together, and it's tape already once the glue dries, but because the detail on it is so beautiful. I've had cardboard terrain before. You may have seen my acid house uh, terrain review. That was paper, which is obviously how they can print in such fantastic detail. But I like the sturdiness of MDF from being able to use this with the heavier metal minis that come with Infinity, although there's more of a move to hard plastic in Infinity now, like Games Workshop has been doing for a long time. So weight's not really a problem. It's actually just player clumsiness, I've noticed. So when I use the paper terrain, it's so easy for me to knock it, nudge it, and that's a little bit frustrating with terrain. Whereas with MDF, it's a lot harder for you to you know, nudge it. So that is the Al Medinat series from Micro Art Studios. I absolutely love what I've received so far, to the point where I am actually trying to figure out how I can get a full table worth of this so that when I start doing battle reports, I can do it on a fully themed table, get a nice desert battle mat, and I will be off to the races because this is beautiful. What do you think of the pre-printed terrain? Have you got the Medinat series from Micro Art Studios? Are you thinking about getting it? Drop in the comments below what you like about pre-printed terrain, MDF terrain, what you don't like about it. I will love to hear your thoughts on it in, in its entirety. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video.